ISIS warfare is in direct, deliberate and oftentimes systematic violation of core legal principles related to discrimination, civilian immunity and prisoner of war status. The brutal and indiscriminate violence, torture, sexual exploitation and enslavement directed against religious minorities such as the Yazidis certainly stands out. But so do the public beheadings and the burning of foreigners, the extensive use of child soldiers, the enforced conversion to Islam, the destruction of cultural artifacts such as temples, historic sites and sculptures in museums. Anyone or anything that does not belong to ISIS version of Sharia-based Islam is, in the eyes of the perpetrators, a legitimate target. These violations are part of the ISIS strategy and serve multiple purposes. To frighten and paralyze ISIS local enemies, to forewarn those in ISIS-controlled territory, and to send shockwaves across Western and Arab publics. The level of angst and panic that has been generated by these horrific and deliberate violations has led local forces to oftentimes abandon the fight against approaching ISIS forces out of fear of the consequences that would await them. In other words, the level of horrific and indiscriminate violence used serves to shock, frighten and discipline. The systematic and deliberate level of atrocity is deeply disturbing and has rightly been condemned for its illegal and immoral practices. And yet, what is fascinating in that regard is how this inherently immoral battleground behavior is actually reflected in and through ISIS media strategy. Far from trying to hide, let alone publicly deny such acts, ISIS covers them with their own media outlets and distributes them through its social media strategy. The horrific and indiscriminate violence gets staged in front of running cameras and disseminated through Twitter feeds. It is a virtual celebration of atrocity, aesthetically animated and shot in HD quality. Here, the public execution videos are quite instructive. Take, for instance, the execution of the captured Jordanian pilot. His execution, being burned alive in an iron cage, was staged on an elevated platform, with fans to produce more dramatic imagery and filmed by three cameras for better editing. The release of the video, some four months after the actual execution, was deliberately timed to achieve its biggest impact on enemies of the Islamic State. Similar to public beheading videos, the intention was not primarily to execute the prisoner, but to brutally display and to turn the atrocity itself into a virtual weapon to discipline, frighten and terrorize. Here, the media production of a soft power weapon is paramount to the physical atrocity being committed. In other words, at some level, it is difficult to differentiate between the physical act of execution and the mediatization of the atrocity itself. If the intent was just to kill a captured enemy fighter or a journalist, then this could be accomplished much faster in a much more sanitized and less painful way, for instance, by shooting someone. But to kill someone in the ways shown, through a sword or through burning them alive, is using them as a media weapon. The mediatization of public beheading, therefore, became a tool of war, aimed at provoking and scaring its adversaries. It is the moment when the terrorist becomes auteur and media producer in one. And the aim is to celebrate the shedding of blood in order to direct this violence virtually to the outside world. What this shows is that the ISIS media strategy deliberately places its indiscriminate warfare practices and atrocities center stage. There is not much discrepancy between ISIS physical and virtual warfare strategies. 
Far from hiding or denying violations to existing moral principles, it virtually demonstrates its defiance of the latter. The Islamic State provides a disturbing and yet fascinating example of the extent to which war has gone viral, of the extent to which social media is being weaponized in today's conflicts. And while the Islamic State is not alone in these efforts, it has taken these efforts to an unprecedented level. Hardly a non-state armed group before it has invested this amount of finances and professionalism in its media campaign. Hardly anyone has tapped into social media to the same extent. And hardly anyone has interlinked warfare and social media at that level. No matter how repulsive and gruesome, ISIS has been a trailblazer an example of what digital media can enable such groups to do. This is the closest we have come to being able to glance into what the future holds. A future where groups such as ISIS can now carve out and hold territory, not just physically, but also virtually.